Hi, this is Amy with Flower Moxie, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a spiral bouquet. So first off, I was thinking about it and I was like, I haven't even done a video on that and it's because I haven't built that way in a long time. So back in the day when I was a new florist, when I would do, build a spiral, it was to create a round shape because that was popular in 2007. And then once I started to create a more organic shape, I started building more on like an X axis and haven't left that since. Um, until recently, I was watching Instagram, a um, girl her name is amy the floral coach she builds a lot of spirals and she's an incredible teacher and i was like i need to give this a try and now i absolutely love it so first off it's very easy it's very structurally sound um, but i was overthinking it when i went back to build a spiral um, i was like focusing on the stems and i was getting like my muscle memory was taking the you know the stem at the other direction and so when you go to start this and when i go to start this um, you want to take a trash stem and go in this direction. And then um, when you bring in that new stem, you go in front. See how I'm doing this? And at first, it's not going to feel like a spiral. Like at first, it's awkward. You're twisting, you're building. Um, and then all of a sudden, that spiral really takes shape. And I really love it because there's a lot of stability. Just like Amy, the floral coach said, she's like, there's this stability. Um, you don't have to worry about shifting your hand placement and losing everything. Um, so yeah, it's kind of my new favorite technique. Now, before we get started, the only other thing that I wanna say is you need to have very, very clean stems. So this is a really good example of a lysianthus and it has this little this little nodule so this will be a problem when you're building the spiral at the end you're going to want to adjust things and this will catch and um, just be really annoying to work with so especially in the bridal bouquet have very clean stems have them ready to go and we'll get started Okay, so this bouquet I'm going to lovingly call everything in the kitchen sink. Um, a lot of these flowers are from our wildflower collection. I thought this would be like a great way, um, yeah, just a great source of material for this uh, tutorial. So we start just by putting the greenery over our hand and you can start with the flower, it doesn't matter. We're gonna add the second one and you can put them at different heights. So going back to my misconception, when you do the spiral, it doesn't have to be roundy moundy. I also was afraid that it would be 360 and you know how I feel about kind of creating a backside to my bouquet because I know that bride is gonna lay it down all throughout the evening, but I can still create what I want with that spiral technique. And I tend to like to grab clusters. And so here's some solidago. I'm coming back in and it's at a different height. And we're not gonna be extremely particular about the overall shape until the end. So that's one thing that you wanna keep in mind is don't, over, don't overthink it too much. Just get it started and work in the colors. And this is the part that like threw me is I, you grab it and you twist and you go to the other side. And that was strange for me. So we're grabbing and we're twisting. We're gonna bring in some delphinium. I'm just kind of alternating. I want a little bit of greenery. And so we're twisting again. So I'm gonna bring that guy up, come in with this button palm. I forgot about my favorite. I love and hate this stuff. Uh, this is Feverfew, also known as chamomile. And it's kind of, it's kind of wild like baby's breath when you start like taking it apart and cleaning it it can get kind of messy um, and then if you do get it just expect to have a little bit more loss than normal like I often have to snip a few of these guys off see what I'm dealing with <laughs> I'm 
This is Veronica, love this stuff. Sometimes it's straight up, sometimes it's curvy. So I'm kind of looking and I'm like, okay, I've got this pink on the backside. I'm gonna bring this pink in over here. I don't want like huge clusters of a bright color. I wanna disperse it a bit. Here's some purple Lysianthus, some Billy Balls, also known as Crispidia. And let's go ahead and bring in these ranunculus. I love it when they open all of the way. They almost look like an anemone. So I'm gonna let this guy kind of stick out a bit. I can adjust it later. And we're twisting. The one thing that she said that I, I was, when she said it, I was like, I don't know about that. She was right, because I tried it. Um, she's like, yeah, you know, when you do the spiral technique, you can lay it down and walk away. And usually, you know, florists watching this will know when you start a bridal bouquet, you do not lay it down and walk away. Um, so I was nervous to try that, but when I was practicing, I did that and picked it right back up and it didn't lose its shape. So. This last collection, I built all um, bouquets with that technique. Let's see here. And at this point, I start paying attention to what is where. So I notice I don't have really any fever fee right here. I think the hardest thing, like when I'm, especially when I was new, um, is I want it to look like it's going to look at the end as I'm building it. And so I, when I was a new florist, I would get really frustrated. And you've heard me say this before, I would just put all my flowers down, start over again because I was getting flustered. But I wanna urge new florists and DIYers not to do that. Um, when you when you take everything apart it can kind of stress your product out a little bit and a lot of times it's not necessary um, tweaking things judging it <laughs> is all that you need to do so don't make that judgment call of starting over until the very end And I wanna say for wildflower bouquets, if you notice, I don't really have any large roses. That's not something that you're gonna typically see with wildflowers. So I do have some spray roses, uh, a lot of variation, but I don't have a lot of large flowers just because I think to get this like airy, whimsical look, I need um, airy, whimsical flowers and greenery. So when it comes to wildflower bouquets, I really just come in like, this is like, I think it's pronounced Buplarium, but this is kind of my go-to when I'm doing a wildflower bouquet. It's like my preferred greenery. I feel like eucalyptus is maybe like a bit too harsh, a little bit too, um, I don't know, strong. And I feel like it detracts from the vibe that I'm wanting to make. So let's look at where we're at. It's not the final product, but I'm okay with that. Let's bring in a little bit of yellow and we're twisting and I could probably stop, but you know me, I'm just... <laughs> When there's like a, a table full of flowers, I'm pretty much gonna keep building. But for time's sake, let's see where we're at. Okay. So I'm gonna hold it in front of the mirror. It's not far from where I want it to be, but I do need to do some adjusting. Okay, so I'm gonna stop uh, and adjust. I can do this holding onto it 
If you're afraid you're gonna drop it, if your hand is cramping, you can always throw a temporary zip tie on it. And I do this like if I've been struggling with a bouquet, if my hands are tired, that will allow it um, to make sure that I don't <laughs> drop some of the flowers out of it while I adjust. So I'm gonna make this a little bit more organic. I'll loosen up my grip, loosen up um, to let the flowers flare out. And then I start making my adjustments. And it's already coming together that I do have a back. And I'm purposely deciding that. You don't have to have a front and a back but you know the reasons why I prefer that. So at this point, like this guy is low, I'm gonna grab the stem and bring it up. This guy is a little bit high, and this is where those, that clean stem comes into play because if they're really messy, I'm not gonna be able to make those adjustments. Here's these billy balls. I will say that, um, Sometimes it's easier to push the stem from the bottom up because if you come in and grab it, I've decapitated quite a few flowers with that technique. So um, I'll initially try that and if it's struggling, I'll just kind of jiggle the flower to figure out where its stem is and then I'll push up from there. Okay, so when you're done, you can use a zip tie if you don't have a ton of delicate stems. You can use a rubber band or stem tape or bind wire. Like I said, you can make this more rounded. I can make it more asymmetrical, um, larger, wild. Um, any, tech, any shape works for this technique. If you have any questions, then leave it in the comments below. Visit flowermoxie.com for more tutorials and learning. Thank you so much.